over to Exclusive to get us started. The floor is yours. Appreciate it, man. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, it was a great day in the market. I'm sure a lot of people made a lot of money, so um, it's great to see. Um, if you're not following everybody on the panel, go ahead and give them a follow because we got a bunch of really good speakers here, great content and free content as well as paid content, but give them a follow. Um, so, yeah, to kind of uh, touch on, I guess, the S&P 500, I'll start with that first, the SPY. You know, the past two days this week, it was really, you know, a lot of people were caught, you know, off guard um, when the market opened below the uh, 50 MA on the daily. And, you know, it, it was honestly, it was a necessary pullback for that next leg up. So we're kind of in the midpoint of it, and it could really honestly keep going, um, but I'm not going to be biased in just bullish direction, so I'm going to be prepared either way. Um, we do have some more um, choppy days ahead, even though it's overall ending green and to the upside. I'm still prepared for, you know, Powell speaking, FOMC, CPI data, all these um, things happening throughout the week. So um, definitely going to be prepared in either direction. Um, so what I'm looking for um, in the markets for this S&P is, you know, reclaiming that um, 8 and 21 EMA on the daily was a big, big step into the right direction. So now I, I feel like we're starting to see some more bullish momentum shift in their favor. Um, I'm looking at the MACD slowly curling back um, towards green. It's not green yet, but it's slowly turning to that direction. Um, so I remain hopeful for going into the rest of the week, but I will be um, ready for a ch pretty rapid change in direction. So, um, you know, levels to the upside for the week, I'm targeting 474.57. Ideally, that would be great to hit, but, you know, like I said, we got some resistance um, in the 471 area, so I'm um, going to be watching that for potential reversals. And if it breaks through and holds, then I'll be targeting that 474.57. Um, you know, the Qs, every, everything pretty much did well today. Um, we, we had some strong pivot support and resistance levels that kind of balanced in range. And then, you know, we had some higher lows throughout the days. So, uh, you know, all in all, it's, it's pretty bullish for me all around. Um, but again, you know, I, I'll keep repeating this, and, you know, so that people are thinking about it. I'm not going to be just married to one direction. I'm going to be prepared for a major support to, or resistance to be hit, and it immediately reverse, and I'll play the other direction. This is one of the first weeks um, in a long time that I've played puts more so than calls, um, but I'll play either direction. So um, that'd be my recommendation in the markets, uh, particularly the SPY and Qs and NASDAQ, um, and then the Dow is pretty pretty much going in the right direction as well as the SMH. Um, do you want me to go over individual tickers now or do you want me to do that later if I can not get uh, kicked? Do you think you'll be on later? That's the question. I, okay, well then there you go. I, I, yeah. thought I, I thought I got kicked because my mic showed muted, but apparently you could still hear me, so that's fine. I, I can still hear you. You're still here. I know that you had a lot of problems later and got frustrated for you, so if you do want to just wrap all your stuff up, in the beginning, that would be cool. And for everyone else, we'll do sentiment first and then stock picking like usual. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, it, it's honestly really hard to narrow it down to just three individual names. However, there's a lot of names that are severely beaten down or that are on extremely strong support. Um, if you go over to my Twitter page, there's a whole list of charts that I posted um, that, you know, I'm sure you can find some good plays in either direction, but there's a lot of potential breakouts coming in, um, mainly in the XLE sector. So um, I'm going to be looking at energy, um, but individually, I'm going to be looking at names like uh, Chipotle off of Golden, Golden Pocket Support. I'm going to be looking at ET off of, um, it's right at the base of Golden Pocket Resistance and a major downtrend resistance. So that's one that could break and move to the upside. Um, I mean, that's a cheaper stock too, so... Um, I know a lot of people will probably be playing it. Um, and last but not least, Starbucks, that's a really good one. It's at a very, very crucial pivot point um, right near the point of control, right near FIB. So we have um, the value area right there as well. So Starbucks, it can go, it's a play for either bears or bulls. It just depends on how, you know, the, the rest of the week plays out. So, you know, I, I know plenty of people that are bullish. I know plenty of people that are bearish. So it's just going to make, it's just going to depend on, you know, how it plays out the rest of the week. So, um, you know, those are, t those are just the most recent three on Twitter. So um, those are just the three that I went with. 
But um, if anyone has any questions on those tickers, feel free to send me a DM on Twitter. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you getting us started. Do you want to just reiterate those um, tickers one more time for everyone in the audience? Yeah, Starbucks, uh, ticker SB as in boy, UX. Um, Chipotle is uh, CMG. And then ET is energy transfer. And uh, those are the three most recent charts on my Twitter feed. Perfect. Everybody be sure. And you can feel free to pin those up top if you would like, if somebody wants to take a look at them. As my speakers are always welcome to pin things up top. But thank you, Exclusive, for getting us started here tonight. Okay, well, let's keep it going. Um, just going to mix it up. Some people kind of went towards the end last time. Want to bring them more to the front this time. Andrew, do you want to go next? Absolutely. What's going on, everyone? You have, uh, so far at the beginning of the year, it's already been you know supercharged with volatility. There's there's so much going on in a lot of these areas of the market. You know that were leading last year, or lagging this year. There's there's a lot of rotation under the surface. So we're seeing, you know, overall this rotation into value stocks, and now it's all about the Federal Reserve and what they're doing. So. You know, for me, I primarily try trade the price and trend of the market, but I think it's super important to just be aware of what's going on in the background. So today we had uh, Powell's testimony, and basically, you know, he reiterated we're going to be having these rate hikes coming, you know, later in the year. Uh, and you know, the newest thing is that now we might actually have a balance sheet roll off as well, and I think that's. You know, recently why everyone freaked out and panicked and started selling all these tech stocks and treasuries have been selling off. Today was the first day we had seven consecutive days of sell-offs in the treasury market. Today was the first day that we got a nice bounce in the treasury market. And my trend model actually flipped from negative to positive. So we're getting a nice bounce in the market. Looks great. And now we find ourselves, you know, the S&P 500 is at the 4,700 level. And I think 4,700 is a really good level to trade against. To be honest, we have the 20-day moving average. We're pretty much right on top of it. So tomorrow we're going to have our CPI data that's going to come out. And everyone is super worried about inflation. And we already had this big treasury sell-off. So my bias heading into tomorrow is that we'll see some more continued relief. You know, hopefully this CPI print doesn't come out, you know, way above the consensus. I believe the consensus number is 7%. If we get anything below that consensus, then, hey, maybe we get a push above this 20-day moving average in, in the SPY, and that could bode well into this OPEX that's coming up on January 21st. Um, that being said, though, you know, we're seeing this balance in these growth stocks, I'm making sure to not, you know, just fall in love with these growth stocks all over again and really just like stick with that group and think it's about, you know, they're all about to run back to the highs. Um, I think it's good to play these for bounces, but to be honest, I think the groups that I'm really trying to concentrate in um, are the stocks that actually have earnings, you know, stocks that pay dividends have been doing really well this year. Uh, And I'm noticing a theme, a bunch of people mentioned it, uh, last week on Spaces, uh, these Chinese and emerging market stocks that are coming out of downtrends. So those are really the areas of the market that I'm focused on. And for me, it's all about just trading process and also you know selling into strength. So tomorrow, if if everything goes down the happy path, you know I'll likely be selling some into that strength. And I think that's going to be for me, you know, a common theme throughout the year. Just when you see the profits, you know, clip at least some of them off because right now the indices, you know, they're red for the year so far. And, uh, you know, my expectations for this year are not really that high. So yeah, just want to make sure being prudent, taking some profits into gains and just following the price action. Cause I don't think anyone really knows, you know, what's going to happen this year. Perfect. Thank you, Andrew and our awesome speakers keeping right on schedule. We're going to keep it rolling. Next, Mr. Danny Nas. Great to speak to you for the third time today. Love to see it. What's going on, man? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it's my uh, it's my favorite day of the week. It's my favorite time of the day. It's Taco Tuesday, 8 p.m. with my favorite people, my favorite traders. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not really much to add <clears throat> from what uh, Andrew and Exclusive said, but what I'll give you is my take on on the three main indexes and then what I see moving forward. Uh, so basically, SPY came up to a trend line, had a false breakdown on Monday, yesterday, and then today had a beautiful rebound off of a 236 retracement at 462.15. We came right into that spinning top high candle and actually closed over the uh, the swing high anchored VWAP. So that bodes pretty well for SPY at the moment. Um, so I'm really curious to see, are we going to come back up to that 472 to 474 mark and, and test that little bit of resistance zone there? So uh, SPY looking pretty decent. Uh, the Q's, very similar story, um, came back over the 50% retrace at 379.50, has not tested the swing high anchored VWAP. So the Q's and tech lagging just a bit behind uh, SPY. So there could still be a little bit of, of juice left there uh, for, uh, for tech. Uh, and for, let's see, IWM, for the smaller caps, um, let me go back up to the daily chart. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a falling wedge breakout on, let's see, sorry about that. My screen just flashed in front of me, almost like my life. All right, so we had a, a falling wedge breakout on, on December 27th and uh, move up to 226 right at where that gap was. Had an, uh, basically a spinning top signal a reversal came right back down to that falling wedge tested it for three days yesterday gapped below and failed to close over and now today we're right back over so interesting we've back tested the falling wedge now we're moving higher let's see where um the small caps go from here but you know really the name of the game is going to be two tickers it's going to be xle energy and XLF financials. Uh, XLE is one of the top performing sectors in the last seven days, um, and actually in the last 30 days as well, up 10.5% over the last seven and 30 days, up 3.5% today. Talked about a lot of energy names yesterday on Spaces, so no need to reiterate there. You can check the replay. But on financials, I mean, financials have been looking pretty good as well. And so we're going to be getting into earnings season. I believe JP Morgan reports on Friday. And then next week, we have a lot of financials reporting. So I think we'll have a continue to have a little bit of a run-up in there. I do like financials. I do like energy for this year, both those two names. And as far as tech, listen, let it drop. There are other names out there. You know, you don't have to just short tech, right? You can long energy. You can long uh, financials. It's not as sexy. It's not as quick of a move, but they're going up. They're green. So put your money where the money is flowing to. Uh, you know, you don't need to uh, necessarily sit on your hands if you're only trading tech. I mean, that was me uh, two years ago. You know, I was a one trick pony. And now, you know, there are a lot of things that I like to do. So if that's you, Now would be the time to start thinking about, well, what happens if tech doesn't move this year? And you so you if you're only a tech trader, you're only gonna sit on your hands. No, you gotta see where the money's flowing to. So um, yeah, I think as far as K Web and the Chinese stocks, we're definitely seeing an oversold bounce. Whether that's a dead cat bounce or an actual move to the upside, I don't know. But happy to play these intraday moves. I mean, I think it was just uh, JD that had a really big move today. So there's a lot of names out there that are bouncing. Um, But I'm really focused on the things that have held up with relative strength over the last two weeks while we've seen the sell-off in tech, while we've seen the sell-off in growth. Because when the market turns, chances are those names are going to continue to go higher. So that's pretty much what I got. I definitely have some really good names to talk about later. So looking forward to getting into them in a bit. Perfect. Thank you so much, Danny. It's great that, uh, you know, we're able to really hone in on these different areas of the market that are leading and affecting others. Danny mentioned a couple of specific sectors for this week. We're going to have earnings within them. I'm sure we'll talk about how those will affect it. Just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, It was also pretty cool that I saw now for spaces. I used to only be able to tag like eight generic categories, but now I can go in and like do specific tags. So like for this space, I was able to tag SPY and tag business research, which I thought was very cool. 
I think they're still figuring out, but hopefully eventually this will get us into more algorithms, get us into more areas. Um, shout out Spaces, who told me that they've officially put my Spaces in the algo. So Wolf Spaces do show up at the top of the Spaces tab for anybody that is following. It also shows up in your What's Happening Now if you're not following. Um, but you might as well follow so you can get all these Spaces. Uh, we've already done, today's Tuesday, right? We've already done over 10 hours of Spaces, uh, over 11 hours of Spaces, I think, so far between today and yesterday, um, plus Sunday. Uh, did over an hour so on the grind let's keep it going also shout out i just love seeing these analytics we've already had 830 people come through this space crazy crazy if you haven't already shared uh, i did put out a tweet i think i pinned it up top maybe i didn't it's my last tweet or my second to last tweet and that's this space or you could just share it out if you want the analytics yourself feel free to tag me maybe i'll retweet it uh if you do share this space that would be awesome with that being said the big dog is back in the house stock talk Weekly, Stock Talk Daily, Stock Talk Minutely. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Would love to hear your thoughts on market sentiment. Yeah, man. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, make sure if you're listening into this that you follow all the speakers. Uh, they're great speakers. I, I follow all the people up here who are speaking, and they all provide uh, some great content and a diversity of content, too, which I think is important if you're trying to filter out information. But, um, you know, coming into this week, I – you know, kind of expected it to be uh, a volatile week. We had a lot of scheduled catalysts um, this week on the economic calendar. Um, obviously, we had Powell's testimony yesterday, which, you know, if you were watching it live and you were watching Spy and QQQ, I mean, they were responding by the minute to, you know, his tone and his comments. And, you know, while he, you know, brought up the possibility of uh, an end of the year QT event with the Fed letting the balance sheet run off. Um, I think he's just an expert. You know, I've always been a fan of Powell's ability to manage rhetoric. And I think he's an expert at, you know, even when he is hawkish, providing uh, the context in a way that is relieving to the market. And I think that's why we saw that rally yesterday. Um, and today as well. And, you know, I, I, I want don't want to be too much of a, a speculator on weeks like this. You know, the market does trade around these events, as we saw yesterday. And as I think as we will see tomorrow um, with the CPI data, you know, obviously, if we get a ridiculous print, like something like seven plus, um, you know, I expect the market uh, QQQ especially to give back a lot of the gains it's made this week. Um, and then on the converse side, you know, if we do see an inline cpi print or, or even below expectations um you know maybe this rally can continue for the rest of the week but i don't want to be too much of a speculator headed into tomorrow which i think really is the pivot point um and then by the end of this week we should have a better you know current economic picture um you know we have the 10-year bond auction tomorrow as well we have crude oil inventories tomorrow as well thursday we have the ppi data we have unemployment claims and the 30-year bond auction and then on Friday, we have the uh, retail sales report and uh, FOMC member Williams will speak as well. So um, there's a lot of, of things to keep track this week. You know, if, you, if you're a trader or an investor who's not really in tune with all these, you know, macroeconomic developments, um, you know, I, I strongly suggest that you do, uh, you know, kind of at least have a, a general idea of what's going on because it certainly affects the way that things trade. You know, coming into this week, based on the trend last week, uh, you know, I was still bullish financials and I still am bullish on financials headed into the summer. Um, you know, I think headed into the first rate hike, you're going to see more of a rotation into those names. Um, but, you know, as the string gets tugged either way, you know, today where we saw relative strength in the queues and, and you know, in a lot of smaller names that are beaten down. Um, I, you know, that can continue depending on the rhetoric that, uh, you know, comes out and depending on also the CPI data prints, the way they're presented, the way they hit the headlines, you know, all of those things matter and, and will dictate sentiment going forward. So, you know, on the on, on the side where we get a cooler CPI data print than expected and where the 10 year and 30 year bond auctions go in in favor of the market, then, you know, maybe we do see some continued um, rebounds and, and potentially even some reversal setting up on some of these growth and tech names. But, you know, in the case where we don't, uh, you know, the, in the case where we do see, you know, concerning inflation data and, and, you know, in the case where it is still running hot, and I know the Biden administration came out today and said they expect uh, used car prices uh, to persist, but they expect to see some tapering off of inflation in regard to energy assets. And so we'll see, you know, how that ends up playing out. But 
in the case where we get hot inflation prints and, you know, I think that's making the market lean more towards the narrative of expecting, you know, three to four rate hikes this year. And in that case, I think financials will continue to outperform in the near term. In the case where that doesn't happen, you know, I am looking to play some of those tech and growth names for bounces. As we saw today, you know, that was a great trade to take today. We had, you know, most of the double digit gainers, at least on my watch lists, um, were in, you know, were speculative names, right? And so uh, then there were a lot of them today that, that and some of them, you know, reemerged above key moving averages, showing that they can set up an uptrend if we get enough of these high sentiment days um, and enough liquidity in those sectors. So, I, yeah, this is a week where I'm really just kind of, hoping to come out of this week with a few good trades, which so far the last two days have been excellent for the, for us, for those who are in my Discord. And I'll talk about some of those picks later on when we get to that juncture. But outside of that, uh, I'm hoping to have a better picture of the current state of the economy by the end of this week because of how much, you know, um, uh, economic, you know, information we're going to get this week. And based on that, I'll probably have a more clear, definite picture headed into next week of the positions and the sectors that I want to go long or short on. But this is the kind of stuff that can change, you know, on a whim. Um, we're in a very volatile market. We're in a very sentiment driven market, catalyst driven market. And so in cases like this, I think making just binary speculations um, is kind of a fool's errand and, and it doesn't really work well because, you know, you can find the best charge set up or the best fundamental narrative on the market and if it doesn't work, you know, if, if you if that get that narrative gets rejected by whatever economic data is presented, then, you know, your whole thesis goes in the garbage. And, you know, all that speculation was really for for not. So um, I'm continuing to take things day by day. You know, I, I know I've been repeating this for a while, but ever since last September, really, I've been more of a day trader, more of a, a theme and sector based trader than I normally am. You know, I'm taking very limited swings. Um, I'll talk about some of those later, some of the swings that I'm still in, but um, taking very limited swings and really just trying to benefit off momentum and being very quick to take profits. I don't want to, you know, try to make those judgment calls in a market like this, especially where we have so many policy headwinds. Um, and, and I expect us to keep seeing rotations, not only in the indexes, but under the indexes where we've been seeing rotations under the indexes uh, all the way dating back to last February. So for those who've been paying attention to the markets, we've seen, you know, those rotations happen in small caps, D SPACs, uh, you know, some mid caps and, um, and some of these high flying larger cap tech names as well. Think about names like upstart, which have come off huge from their highs, right? Like really popular, well-researched names that have a lot of smart people behind them um, ha have absolutely gone crushed. And so looking for reversals in those names even with the slightest positive turn in sentiment, right? Like we saw, we saw what happened with Powell, you know, Powell's comments really drove, even though they weren't dovish, you know, if you really looked at the full context of his comments, they weren't necessarily dovish, but they really drove sentiment today just because he kind of emphasized that point of flexibility for the fed and the fact that they're still watching you know, the labor markets, and they're still watching, you know, how the Omicron variant is handled. And so I think that gives investors and traders a little bit of hope that there is flexibility from the Fed and it won't necessarily be this ramp up in in uh, tapering of, of monetary policy the way that we think it will be. But at, at all that being said, I still expect the first rate hike to be in March, as most of the, the market does. Um, it's just really a matter of how quickly that quantitative tightening narrative pops up. And, you know, my last point I will make is it's interesting to note how we go from one narrative to the next with regard to severity. Um, you know, at, at first it was inflation, which was, mo which was a lot of last year where that was a concern. And then the market kind of graduated from being concerned about inflation to being concerned about the changes in monetary policy as a result of inflation. And now the market has graduated to being concerned, not necessarily about the rate hikes, which, you know, to a degree have been baked in, and I'm not saying they've been fully baked in, but to a degree they've been baked in, um, the market's now looking forward to potential quantitative tightening uh, of the Federal Reserve balance sheet. So, you know, we're kind of getting further and further away from, you know, what's considered a severe negative catalyst. And I think that's a good sign. And I think that's also a sign that a lot of these reactions have been baked in over a period of months. So mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to monitor that economic data and, and those prints that we'll see tomorrow and 
for the rest of the week and I'll base my you know sector rotations and, and the themes I'm interested uh, on that information. Awesome. Thank you, Stock Talk Weekly. Definitely keep an eye out on those CPI numbers as well as the rate hikes. It's good to you know have a long-term view here as well. Uh, we put them back around the micro. I like that we can hit on both sides. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Blake, would you like to go next? Yeah, what's going on, everybody? Appreciate you having me up here, Gov. Uh, what am I going to be up here with all of these greats? If you're not already, I'm going to reiterate, please go ahead and give these guys a follow. Everybody gives phenomenal content for free. Uh, and if you'd like to, make sure you check out their paid content as well. Uh, but just to get, you know, talking about some market sentiment here. Uh, it's important to obviously, you know, have your trading hat on if you're a trader, but also if you're investing in the market, keep that long-term vision as well. And so uh, I love hearing what, what uh, Danny is saying and, and what, uh, you know, Stock Talk is talking about as well. I'm extremely bullish financials and energy the rest of this year. Uh, my investment portfolio uh, reflects that. I'm 20% long uh, FAS and 10% long ERX. Those are leveraged indexes. Uh, that gives me a lot of, I have a, obviously a lot of conviction in those sectors. Typically, I am somebody who loves to trade the NASDAQ. And like Danny said, uh, if the NASDAQ, you know, doesn't do anything this year, chop sideways, goes down, that's fine. Let it do that. You have to find the areas of the market that are leading. And right now, those areas are in energy and financials. And so that's been my focus. Uh, it was very nice to see the S&P today recapture that 50-day moving average. Yesterday, it gapped below it. Uh, sold off and then printed a nice reversal candle uh, yesterday. And today, uh, I mentioned to my followers, we need to see follow through today or else we're going to be in trouble. And we did. We got that follow through. Closed back above the 50 day, uh, closed back above Friday's high as well. So uh, putting, you know, somewhat a reversal pattern in. Uh, so I'm, I'm still, you know, bullish long term on the market. I posted a chart on the Qs, the NASDAQ. Uh, that it caught some support from a previous uh, pivot from an anchored VWAP. So if you anchor a VWAP uh, from the July 19th low, that pivot on the 19th, uh, you can see that Friday, Monday, and today, we all tr it all traded in that range. And it nicely coincides uh, with uh, a 37946 level, which happens to be a nice FIB level as well. And so we got above that and printed a nice bullish candle today i'm not focusing on tech but i do like to see tech you know reverse and lead because if tech were to roll over and break below some of the lows that we saw yesterday uh it could absolutely bring the rest of the market down with it and yesterday I, I'm, I'm not going to to sugarcoat it i was a little bit concerned because we were breaking uh, a triple bottom so to speak on the cues uh, so from so the, the December 3rd low, the December 20th low, and then we, we broke both of those. So yesterday I was a little bit concerned, needed to see a reversal. We got that today. The cues didn't roll over, but we are not out of the woods yet. So uh, I'm focused on what's leading. I'm focused on energy and financials like many of these professionals are up here as well. Uh, so that's where my attention is. I'm still watching the NASDAQ because that's that's my comfort zone. That's where I like to play. Uh, but right now, it's just not where uh, the money's being made. Uh, and so you have to look elsewhere. So I'm still bullish long term on the market and cautiously optimistic in the short term. Perfect. Thank you, Blake. Um, definitely feeling that sense of cautious optimism that's similar to our space that we did at 12 p.m. EST today. Uh, there was a lot of that similar ideology a lot of waiting on the breakout, waiting for the move for confirmation. If anybody is following along with us, uh, you can be, obviously there's a very technical approach that you're going to get in this space. It's kind of a mix of technical and macro. Um, you're not going to hear, I, I think you'll hear maybe some fundamentals, but you'll hear more things like technicals and option flow um, and things along those lines. So just kind of familiarize yourself with some of those terms. Um, and so, you know, as Blake was mentioning, the S&P, which is the ticker SPY, you can take a look at that. I'm looking at it on Trend Spider. And on here, you can see that that session, that, that daily uh, candles went ahead and they reclaimed, like he was talking about, the 50-day. That's kind of happened about three times now over the last uh, month and a half, I would say, you know, going back to December uh, 1st, December 2nd, where we saw that happen. 
Um, and we've had now, you know, a couple of days of green candles with some, uh, some decent volume, at least yesterday, um, slightly lower today. So we'll see if we can continue to keep that rolling. Uh, you know, keep a move upwards. You always want to stay above those moving averages in a healthy market, uh, preferably. Also, uh, thank you to all of my speakers for always shouting out to follow each other. Y'all are all great followers. So I love to see the energy up here when everybody kind of gets in on it with us. And thank you to everybody who just got the Wolf account to 43K. Uh, it's always nice when you break through those nice round numbers. Uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean a whole lot for, I guess, 43, but hey, I'll take it. Thank you, everybody, for joining up. It's been really fun spending, you know, legitimately more of my day with y'all than not. Uh, with that being said, let's keep it moving. Uh, Juicy, I see you just tagging me. You want to go next? Hey, sure thing. Uh, you guys know me. I like to throw charts up. <clears throat> At the top, I threw a chart up before we get in. Again, like, it's like Wolf said, so make sure you follow everybody here. Everybody here is a legend. And pretty much, I got to start off by saying I pretty much almost identically agree with everybody here. Um, and I've been saying this. Since last year, coming into this year's market is going to be different. The stuff that worked last year probably will not work this year. So that means you're going to have to look in different sectors. And a majority of people who've been trading have only traded chat, uh, tech for the last three years because that's what's really been working, right? So now we're getting to this environment where stuff's changing. However, I'm going to go ahead and go over this chart. If you're looking at this SPY, I really like the fact that we broke back above the 50. And in fact, on 1221, once we broke above that 50, I was like, all like, I was like, hey, yo, we're going to go. And I'm, I'm not going to say it this time because, again, as Stock Talk pointed out, we got CPI coming up. You got more comments from the Fed and everybody's worried about inflation. Those are actual headlines that I'm worried about. And you guys know I really don't care about news. So if I'm worried about the news, I mean, you should be worried about the news, too. So. Without that, if SPY is not, let's just say CPI wasn't there, I would be bullish, right? Looking at the chart, we're bouncing off the uh, 100 moving average, just like we did on the 1220 area. Uh, you basically got a reversal going on. You would hammer it off. The price today came in. We took out the high from yesterday, pushed price up. And now what I'm looking at is 470.78, okay? If you clear that 470.78 level, which is the higher day from uh, 1210, you got rejected on 1213, that cluster of candles. And if you look at 1215, we pretty much stopped right there on the on the reversal. That area is key to me. If you break that 470.78, you pretty much got a straight shot to take out the high of the 1.5 candle at 477.80. So I'm going to be looking for an actual reversal and continuations. However, it's all about rotations. Man, everybody today in my inbox, and I, and I kind of missed it too, I'll be honest with you. I traded NVIDIA today, got some gains. I traded Lucid, and I rolled in, I rolled profits into uh, next week's contracts, which I'm still holding. I'm still holding 50 calls. Oh, and I traded something else today. Point of matter is nobody caught XOM. Look at XOM. Energy is running. Energy is absolutely killing this market, man. So I'm pretty much agreeing. Go ahead and agree with everybody here. XLE, XLF, which is the financials, XLY, and I'm going to post this thing right here for you guys so look at the top of these uh of the top of the spaces there's an app called the spider sectors you can download this particular app and it help you keep uh up, up to date with every sector here so this is a part of my uh process now is just going through and see where the money went and then going through each of the top stocks in that sector and we're going to cover that here tonight a little bit later to see what ran but it looks like and going forward into the rest of this year energy financials and communications are going to lead the way Tech right now is skeptical, but money did flow into tech. So with all this being said, putting this back to the market, I'm bullish here on actually on the market. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, you know, all these reports and everything. Technicals lead the way for me, and technicals right now are bullish, just like it did on 1221. And I'm expecting to break a 478, and if we trigger, I expect the price of the market to actually move up. But thanks. Thanks again. Perfect. Thank you, Juicy. Uh, Juicy also – just made a post, pretty interesting stuff. He did pin that up top where you can see all the different areas. You could see XLE, XLF, you could see Canada movement. Really nicely broken down. Thank you for putting that out there. Uh, excited, we're making our way through this really nicely. Okay, uh, Money Mel, would you like to go next? Thank you, Gav. Congrats on getting the recognition you deserve with Twitter Spaces. You definitely put in the work, so glad to see that you're up there and getting noticed and everybody can be a part of the spaces that you host, especially those interested in investing and even those that are just curious. But it'll be exciting to get some new people in this year that are uh, looking to trade the markets. You're definitely the one to show them the way. Um, 
been interesting. Haven't really seen the same dynamics that we have had previously. I've been eagle eyeing some of our leveraged ETFs, the TQQQ, which is three times leveraged Qs, the SOXX, SMH, just not really seeing the participation there that we have seen on dips before. Um, <clears throat> and with some of the flow that we're seeing into the major indices, you're getting shorter term positioning. Uh, we are about to uh, come up on a the ER brink. So seeing some put activity, but let's kind of weigh that there with what, you know, the indices are often used for is a means to um, hedge <clears throat> longer positions. So you're going to see more of that as we get closer to a lot of these bigger names reporting, but just not seeing some of the leverage ETFs uh, with the flow that we had seen previously when we've had some pullbacks. Um, going to echo, Andrew mentioned it, um, with uh, and the pup as well, uh, China names. I think that we've definitely had um, the money flow come in into that sector, and perhaps we're still seeing. Um, I know it was, you know, definitely a buzzword at the beginning of the year. You know, you had Santa Claus rally that ended, and then January effects, and um, you didn't necessarily have that initial move. But I think we're seeing a lot of individual names taking. Um, place and, and seeing some run up where we could still be potentially seeing some window dressing, especially in some of these names that are beat up. So uh, an individual name game, as well as um, the relative strength in the sectors that have been outperforming and XLE definitely, definitely outpacing today. Um, but just, just a side note on, on some of the activity in the, in the, the China um, theme, you know, we had, larger dark pool activity, which which has been coming in. It's not something that it's, you know, you see something and then the next day this happens. It's It's been a process um, for sure with some of these individual names, but just kind of to highlight um, Asher, which is one of the China ETFs, had a 6 million share dark pool print last Friday um, at 38.12. And on average, this one only trades 3.16 million shares and that was the largest if you look at that chart and you look at volume and you want to talk about a pocket pivot um, that was the largest volume uh, that ETF has seen since 7 8 2020 um, continuing to see the most flow going into FXI um, but but more directly Kweb uh, which is another China ETF um, so I think we do have a lot of rotation there and you're seeing more of the base building and some of the individual names. So while I know that there's been a lot of um, headline risk with China this next year, I think that we're starting to see a little bit of money rotate there, which would make sense. You, they've been extremely beat up. And if anybody's looking to um, outperform this year and, and we can get a move in that sector, um, those can move pretty quickly. And I think we saw that today with JD as well as a few of the other names. Um, you have that higher risk there. So you want to definitely protect any stops, respect any stops that you have. But I think we, we do have a, a larger rotation into um, that space as well. Um, otherwise, not really seeing, like I said, a lot of short term. So it's going to be that individual name game, seeing momentum. Um, especially a lot of these names that are coming off the bottom, you're not really seeing that longer positioning, but more of um, that play off the bounce, oversold uh, bounces, um, which means, you know, you want to take that profit. When you have that green, don't don't stick around with, with hopium, you know, take that money and, and make sure it's helping to grow your account, especially with starting off on the new year, start off on the right foot. Perfect. Thank you, Mel, so much. Mel's awesome, if anybody doesn't know, for option flow, for dark pool, um, for everything along those lines. Really, really good stuff. So appreciate you coming on and sharing those with us and excited to see how that factors into your stock picks as well. And of course, we are going to now hear from Vegas, uh, who will be our final speaker, uh, well, after Stock Market News, of course, on social sentiments. And then we'll move into stock picking. All you, Vegas. Okay. Hi, everyone, and thanks for having me on here tonight. I appreciate uh, everyone on here and for being here tonight. And uh, you know what? I uh, did great today with um, QQQ. I was able to offset <laughs> some puts that I had 
uh, yesterday. So uh, that was uh, a nice offset. But, uh, you know, it was kind of a bit choppy this morning, and then things just reversed. I found that everything was just flying. And uh, we obviously saw the XLE energy sector was popping, and uh, we traded that. Uh, XLF started uh, popping as well towards uh, later on in the day, so those were pretty strong. And, um, you know, saw some strength also in some of these uh, crypto names. I mean, I saw, you know, Hood was looking pretty strong today, uh, Robin Hood. And uh, Beyond Meat was really strong. So it was some good opportunities, I think, for some trades. Uh, my thoughts, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of events uh, coming through. We have the CPI and all the events mentioned as well, uh, that beautiful list that Stock Talk Weekly gave us. Uh, but I, my thoughts are that uh, the QQQ is really strong and uh, looking for that continuation. Uh, the SPY, I'd like to see the actual SPY... Uh, break over that uh, 40, uh, 472.50 uh, for confirmation on the SPY. And then the IWM, I'm looking for that break over that 221.25. But uh, for me right now, the Qs look the strongest. I think the other ones could be, you know, setting up. Looks like the SPY is setting up uh, to go higher. Uh, but definitely I'm bullish actually on the Qs uh, at this point and looking for that to... Uh, move quite nicely uh, over the coming sessions. I know there's all these events, but I'm going to, I guess, observe and see what happens. But I am bullish on the queues. So it'll be interesting to see how definitely how things play out. And uh, obviously, I am prepared, though, that obviously, if it doesn't go in that direction, you know, you need to be quick to switch gears, just like uh, I had to do, you know, yesterday or even today with regards to queue puts that I had, had to switch gears and go into queue calls and offset. So always prepared to switch gears if that's what has to happen. And uh, look forward to sharing um, some opportunities that are looking uh, pretty good for some continuation, hopefully this week, and are pretty much ready to go. So I look forward to sharing those ideas uh, when we go through the rotation of the stocks that we're going to be watching. Perfect, perfect. And just some other information there on the queues for anyone that's looking at it, that is the NASDAQ, that is QQQ. Um, so you could take a look at that. And if you're looking at it right now on a chart, so one of the things that really stands out to me is if you anchor a volume weighted average price, so that is a anchor VWAP from the lows back in October, which are the more recent lows. Uh, if you anchor a VWAP there, we're basically sitting right underneath it. Um, as of now, it kind of like the top look looks like it even touched it today. So that is, I would say, a pretty key anchored view up from right there to look at. Additionally, you have an anchored view up from the year to date, which is kind of also touching. And today we came back through the 100-day moving average. So just a couple of key indicators to keep on everyone's radar. Uh, we had pretty nice green volume both yesterday and today in the queues. Um, today, I would say, was um, decently standard volume, but you know higher than we were seeing um, kind of towards the end of December and definitely higher than we were seeing throughout October and November. Um, so people have been active, you know, obviously we had some big red days and they were quite active on those also on January 4th and January 5th, but there is money flowing into the queues here. Um, that's why you're gonna hear a lot of people talking about trading them because whether you're catching that trade upwards or downwards, uh, you're gonna see more movement here. And that's what people are looking for, especially those that are trading options as they're looking to capitalize on those premium moves. Oh, with that being said, stock market news, the floor is all yours. We'd love to hear from you on market sentiment. Yeah, man, uh, I appreciate that first. And, and as always, Wolf is always putting on uh, amazing spaces with incredible panelists. So I'm going to echo the sentiment of every other, pretty much everyone else that has spoken, but make sure you're checking out everybody who is up here, clicking to their profiles, give them a follow. They're spitting out amazing information on here. Their feeds are going to be even better. Um, you know, first thing when we're talking sentiment, um, you know, I, I know we're in a space talking about individual stocks and, you know, stock picking. This is probably the, the group of people who, who want to pick individual stocks to outperform the, the indexes. But the truth is, when we look at a macro perspective, the average investor is, is really best off going and playing in those ETFs, really dollar cost averaging in over time and kind of just doing their thing for the long term. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so when we're talking about QQQ, uh, I understand where we're at and who this crowd is. But if you're that person who's kind of on the side, just trying to uh, make some money, definitely check out ETFs. They are going to be a good option for you. 
Um, you know, overall with the market, uh, I'll kind of leave it up to a lot of the other people up here. I'm much more of a long-term investor. You know, when I, when I come from my perspective, I really am a permable, um, you know, I'm fine with and sitting on my hands through a down year, as long as, you know, the stories and the fundamentals of the companies that I hold are, are still intact. Um, you know, all I really say is just when you're making your decisions, if you're a long-term investor, I know this is definitely a much more of a trader space. So maybe this doesn't apply to you. Well, I, you know, it still does, but whenever you're making your decisions, no matter what, you gotta be thinking for the long term. You know, if you're looking to hold something for the next five to 10 years and your thesis is something that runs out after this year, then you maybe want to reconsider or do something different like that. Just always be thinking about your time horizon and uh, with the investments you trade. And, you know, when a lot of people are speaking up here in this space, it's going to be a lot shorter. Um, and I think that always keep that in mind. Um, you know, overall, we've had a good two green days where, you know, the market started out red and we kind of had a nice turnaround today. It was a, a good power bounce. And a lot of the other people have spoken to it where, you know, he didn't really necessarily come out and say something bullish, but he just said kind of reconfirming what we already knew. Um, and I feel like that's, that's kind of the stance with Powell. And I am not super worried about any huge panic temper tantrum at, at one point. You know, we might be skittish for a little bit, but I don't necessarily think it will cause a, a, a huge crash at, at any point. But maybe, you know, there, there's always that stats about 10% drawdowns being very typical on a year over year basis or whatever. Um, so maybe that does happen. But, you know, overall, I, I think we'll look back to this year as just another decent year, probably not as good as last year or the year before that, but still a, a solid year for the market. So I'm still happy looking forward. I will shut up and let us get to it. Well, before I do, though, um, we'll take this as pseudo last 20, 30 seconds of my time. I would love to get a, a quick shout out on the Google Spaces calendar. Perfect timing. I just made it through like 45 DMs uh, from earlier today of people asking to be on this calendar. So if you're not already on it, definitely listen closely. We know you have busy lives, but you probably love spaces. We're already 52 minutes into this one. We have had 1,736 people come through here. Most people have been sticking in here for a lot of the time, but how did you find this space? Maybe it popped up on your timeline. Maybe you saw somebody tweet about it, but if you want to know when every single space is going to be, we have the tool for you. The co-hosts up here, myself, Stock Market News, Stock Talk Weekly, have all collaborated on a one-of-a-kind Google Calendar designed for Twitter spaces. Essentially, all you have to do is DM either myself or Stock Market News. Our DMs are wide open. Go ahead into our profile. Just click on that button. You can DM us at any time. Shoot us over your Gmail, preferably, uh, but any email does work. And just ask me on the Twitter Spaces Google Calendar. That is it. On that calendar, once you receive it, you'll be able to toggle it on and off on your personal, so it doesn't have to clog it up. You'll be able to see every single space, every single time that it's happening at, the topic, the speakers. And after the space is done, we will go in and take the link of the recording and insert it right into the notes of that space. So it is your one-stop shop for not just finding spaces, but also listening to recordings of them and everything along those lines. We have spaces not just for fundamental and technical analysis, but also crypto, for day trading, for NFTs, for everything in the investment realm. We'll be covering power hours, morning live trading, options, you name it, we will have it for you this year. We're gonna do over a thousand hours of Twitter spaces. And if you wanna know when all of them are, join over 2000 other investors on the Twitter Spaces calendar. Hedge fund managers are on it, CEOs are on it. People from Twitter have DM'd me and asked to be on it. If you're not on it already, it is the thing for you. With that being said, anything else you wanna to add to that, Evan? No, dude, that was perfect. One of the best tools that we've created, we're constantly trying to improve it. So, you know, like we keep saying that this is one of the best things that we've created and we truly believe that right now. And just to think that it's gonna be even better going forward is hard to believe, but it will be. So you're signing up for a great product now that is always improving. And uh, yeah, we, we got 40 hours of spaces pretty much every single week that honestly might is e even increase. We'll see. Uh, you know, we, we had a two hour time slot open or something like that, and we had too much free time. So we had to fill it with more spaces. So uh, we're going to be trying to deliver extreme amounts of content to you guys. And the best way to, to view all that is to be on this calendar. Yep. You'll, uh, and that's literally what I shared with Evan. I was like, too much free time tomorrow, not enough spaces. Um, with that being said, we're going to keep going. Oh, also, once you're already on the calendar, of course, you'll want to be following the myself, the Stock Market News, and Stock Talk Weekly accounts. We pretty much co-host all of these spaces. So once you see the calendar, that'll let you know when the space is. Once you come into Twitter, then you'll see one of us at the top of your timeline. Um, I typically host and moderate whenever they'll let me. 
Um, so appreciate them kind of sitting back and letting me do what I love so much. Okay. With that being said, we've come to the part of the show where we're going to be talking about individual stock picks. Uh, we made it through the first half in 55 minutes, which is great. Um, I think we're going to mirror that for this half. So we're going to get four and a half minutes total, three total stock picks at four minutes. I will either wave at you, throw my hand up. Everyone was pretty good, to be honest, for the first half of this. So there wasn't much of a need to do it. Um, and we'll just keep it going. I know it's a little bit short to pitch three stocks. If you want to do two, you can do two. Um, but just, you know, we just got to keep on that timely schedule because I want to make sure that everybody is doing the best. Uh, shout out to the ready 15 people who have DM me to be on the Spaces calendar. Please make sure your email is in the DM. That is very crucial. It's the only way that I can add you since deeply expedites the process. Okay, let's keep it going. Starting us off on stock picks. Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun. Mr. Danny Nas. Oh, you threw me off. I thought you were going to stay in uh, stay in the lane. Give me one second. Let me get this up to the nest. All right. So I just posted a bunch of charts up to the top. So I'll go through three, uh, but there are more than three. And then I'm going to continue after spaces and add some more uh, names to the to those charts. So uh, first name I will go over is Lucid. So Lucid on Stock Talk, Talk Weekly's Sunday night chat, Sunday night fireside chat. Um, that was my pick of the week. So far, so good. We've had a beautiful breakout this week. We closed over the swing high anchored VWAP at 47.77 is our next level up above. We're just below that. Watch for a potential gap up above that. And then $47.95, $50.17 are the levels to the, to the upside. Uh, again, that's going to be on the chart that's posted, so no need to review that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Zim, been talking about Zim for a while. Had a um, symmetrical wedge breakout. Next level to the upside, 67.60, then 74.47. And uh, QCOM, been talking about QCOM as well. Put out a chart about that. We had a slingshot squeeze setting up for the upside i am in the 185 calls and the 190s for two weeks out looks pretty good i know that's three um but i'll just throw one more at you really quick um uh, juicy this one's for you zom uh, i did put out zom last week i'm not sure if anybody saw it again not a sexy pick but energy looks great zom looks great another one that i, I like in the oil and gas is ar and i'll, I'll stop there thanks Wow. Oh, okay. Well, you only you only used uh, about two minutes there, Danny. I know. I can go on. I go through them quickly. I don't want to really limit myself. All right. Let's, three. let's reiterate, reiterate those tickers real quick for us. All right. So you have um, – bear with me one second. You have uh, Lucid for a continuation. You have Qualcomm. It's at a supply zone right now, so it might be a little extend, but I still like it to the upside. Zim. And then I also threw up their K-Web and Dick Sporting Goods, DKS, into the uh, the chat upside, uh, the link up uh, top. And uh, I threw out just a, a giveaway for Juicy. That's ZOM, ticker XOM, and then AR, ticker, uh, or um, yeah, ticker AR, Antero Resources. Okay, give us 30 more seconds on why you like Zim here coming into all-time highs. Um, well, for one, it's had a consolidation from September basically to right now. Beautiful um, symmetrical wedge consolidation over all-time highs, which, to be honest with you, those two all-time high wicks did not have closes over the high that we hit today. So for me, technically, this is already breaking out. So I do like this for a continuation. The one thing I will say, watch for a back test. A lot of the times when you get these types of breakouts, you will get a back test. So if you miss the trade, right, because I've been posting about this for weeks now, we've had two false breakouts. I think uh, Pattern Profits is on this with me. Uh, watch for the back test of the 59.29 entry. If we bounce and hold off that level, then I think we head up to 67, which is our 1272 extension, and 74.47, which is our 1618 extension. That's what I got. 